As a child, one of my dad's favorite treats was to be able to make an occasional visit to this local candy store here in downtown Jeffersonville, where for just two cents, he would buy a bag of Mr. Shemp's delicious cinnamon red hops. Today, the Shimp family is still making these Red Hots, using the same recipe and even some of the same big copper kettles that were used some 90 years ago. Believers from all over the world visit this little candy shop that Dad spoke of with such fondness, and like us, they can't resist taking home a package of these Red Hots that have now become world famous. Is Margie Morgan in the building? Sister Margie Morgan, a lady that was eaten up with cancer, a nurse. How many remember Sister Morgan? If she's here, she can't get in. She was nursing, you see, on the cancer list in Louisville. The woman's been dead for about 16, 17 years. On the cancer list in Louisville. When Jim Tom Robinson, the attorney, Christian attorney, heard about it, he went to the Baptist hospital to check and see if he's right because his father's on the board, trustee at the Baptist hospital, and they looked up the case and the woman is supposed to have been dead years ago, and she's nursing here at the Jeffersonville in the hospital. When she stood right here, when they had to hold her up, not even in her own mind, but it was, thus saith the Lord, Amen. and she's a living. She went to nursing in Louisville, and a fellow down here Shimp's Candy Place. Is Mr. Shimp here tonight? I'd like for him to tell it if he's here. Sonny Shimp. Great healthy man. Many times, and I used to, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Pop used to give me a dime uh, if I worked all week. And I'd come to town and park my bicycle around at Brother Mike Egan's place, one of the trustees here, with Jimmy Poole. I think his son is here tonight. Jim and I and Ernest Fisher. And we would go downtown and go to the picture show uh, for a nickel. And we used to see the old steel pictures with little kids and wonder about 18 years old. We had that William S. Hart. Many of you guys don't remember him, the old actor. Steel pictures. Now, I couldn't read. I just had to watch what was going on. And uh, I had to spell it all out. And I couldn't make it, but I watched what he was doing. And I'd have an extra nickel. Now, how many remembers getting the penny ice cream cone? All right, I could get three ice cream cones and two pennies worth of Red Hots. I couldn't hold the ice cream cones, so I'd eat them and get me two pennies worth of Red Hots. It'd be almost a half a pound of them thing. And Shimps made them, and I'd go in there and sit back and watch William S. Hart. And this young fella, a little older than I, stricken down with a disease that five noted specialists of Louisville passed him by weighing about 45 pounds and was dying. Miss Morgan was nursing him, and he was in such a condition. Uh, he had so many things. His lungs was gone. His throat was gone. His little arms was just about that big around, and he was laying there dying. And Miss Morgan was hard to come on the job, so she said to him, uh, I was once the cancer patient, and began to tell him. He said, who would you say, Billy Branham? Why, he said, I've sold him a many a bunch of Red Hots. <laughs> and ice cream cones. He said, wonder if he'd come pray for me. And I went over to pray for Junie um, uh, Shimp, 
And now, if you'd like to talk to him, it's Shimp's Candy. Down here, right next door, our second door from Leo's Theater, down the street, Shimp's Candy. All of you here know where that's at. Mine's one of the oldest establishments in Jeffersonville. And while laying there, dying with five specialists, giving him just hours to live, was thus saith the Lord. You'll not die, but you'll sell me again, red hots, Glory. over the counter. Glory to God. Long, I know he got well, but long had I forgotten that. And wife and I was going down to buy some candy when we got here at Christmas. And how I don't know that we ever thought of shimps. Because usually you go over here to some of these drug stores and pick it up. But we stopped in front of shimps. When I went in, his sister looked and she said, well, Brother Brown, she said, you remember Junie? I said, yes. And there a great, big, strong, healthy looking fellow. And I walked toward the counter, looked at it, looked down like this. I said, I'll take a pound of those red hots. And um, he said, yes, sir. So his sister was waiting on my wife. And so he got them out. And I said, I used to eat them a long time ago over here in the picture show. Keep my head down. And he said, yes, yeah. said, man, the kids buy that. They still buy it. I said, he said, my father made that, fixed up that farm. I said, I really like him. Now, actually got all fixed out and handed to him. He says, anything else? And I said, I don't know. And raised up. <laughs> oh, my. He said, Brother Brown. I said, here's a red hot. said, I told you, thus saith the Lord. Amen. About five Amen. years ago. He said, Brother Branham, I am so completely healed. Uh, there's not even one effect. I'm teeny bit hard hearing in one ear. I guess he's in his 50s. He said, I'm teeny bit hard hearing in one ear because they give me so much antibiotic when I was in there. The amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. It was in 1891 that my husband's great-grandfather decided to start Shimps in Jeffersonville, Indiana, and here we've been at the same site all those years. As an older teenager, I wanted to know how candy was made, so I'd come down here. That was some of the first connections I had to seeing the family make candy. Warren and I had fallen in love with candy long before uh, it was a necessity to keep the business going, so it was just a natural for us to think about uh, when we retired, uh, continuing the business here in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Shimps is kind of famous for its specialty candies. Uh, the most famous is the Cinnamon Red Hots. We've been making those since 1891. They're made on a drop roll machine. That's turn of the century machinery. I love the antique equipment that the family had, so I looked out and started making a collection of antique equipment. And of course, if you have the equipment, you want to use it and do something with it, so we made it a working collection. You see that stove that we're using today? That's more than 85 years old. Now Warren, we know we are making cinnamon red hots. Just what exactly is boiling in that kettle? We have sugar. Sugar. Corn syrup. Corn syrup. Water. Water. And red coloring. Red coloring. It is ready for the cinnamon oil. Look at that. A nice little circle of cinnamon oil. Two things that Warren's doing at this point. Obviously, he's mixing that cinnamon flavoring in. When the flavoring is mixed in by hand like this, each piece is just a little bit different. Now, the machine that you see turning here, this is called a drop roll machine. It's called a drop roll machine because it makes hard candy drops whether they're cinnamon drops, licorice drops, lemon drops, whatever. But I'm sure you very observant people have noticed our back wall here, and you've seen that we are not limited to squares. We already had a wonderful collection of antique memorabilia that was the beginning, the seed of our candy museum. The rest is history. We've got two or three, four thousand pieces in the collection here. Uh, what I say we have here is the history of the U.S. candy industry as told by its packaging and advertising. And here we were in industry that I had some way of helping document the history of the industry itself. I just thought it was a personal request to have fun doing it uh, and collecting these items and seeing how it all fits together. 
this is where people can uh, look and say, this is how something is done. It's been done this way for 120 years by the same family. I think people continue to come because they're looking for something real. This was the Schimpf family profession. People said Schimpf, they said candy in Jeffersonville. We bought this to keep the family history alive. It's a sweet business, I say.